and welcome to another day in my life as an actuarial intern. Today I'll be showing you some of the meetings and events I attend as a summer actuarial intern at an insurance company and an in-depth look into the projects that I'm working on. A lot of you asked for a part two of my previous video, so if you'd like to see a full tour of my office and info on the company that I work for, make sure to go back and watch that video as well. Also, stay tuned to the end of this video to see a walkthrough of one of my project's code. Right away when I get to my desk, you guys know the drill, I check my Outlook email and Microsoft Teams messages to make sure I'm up to date on everything I need to do and know what meetings I have for the day. The first thing I started working on is writing VBA code for a few Excel macros in one of my projects. A macro automates steps in a process. For example, instead of having to manually copy and paste data into another Excel tab, you can have the macro do that for you. So I timed how long it took for each of the macros to run from start to finish, and I also added some code to create a pop-up message box to let the user know when the macro is done running. The purpose of using a macro for this project is to make the data loading process more efficient, dynamic, and free from human error. In order to make the code more efficient, I've been finding ways to write the code in such a way that the macro is able to perform the same steps but in fewer lines of code so that it takes less time for it to run. I've also been making the process more dynamic by creating an input table that organizes all of the files that the macro is pulling from and changing out hard-coded ranges so that if the files that the macro is pulling from change in any way, the process won't completely break. Lastly, I've been creating checks to make sure that all of the formulas have been calculated correctly. Now, this specific project and also the actual department I'm working in is more on the financial side of the company. The data in the project uses actuarial, accounting, and finance terminology, such as callable bonds, amortized costs, gross premiums, current assets, sinking funds, common stock, pivot tables, and TVAR, which first shows up on exams P and exam 3 in the actuarial exam sequence. I've actually seen most of these words pop up in both my internships so far. I've also learned three new noteworthy terms, which are lapsed policies, enforced policies, and stepped premiums, which I will explain right now. So lapsed policies are fully ended policies, either because the former policyholder cashed out or because they just canceled their policy. Enforced policies are active insurance policies where the policyholder is paying their premiums. So basically, the type of policy you'd usually think of is just a new name for it. Stepped premiums are a type of premium where the cost of your coverage is reevaluated each year based on your age at your policy anniversary, which I've never heard of before the summer, but in the eyes of a policyholder seems a little unfair because the older you get, the more you're gonna have to pay in premiums. In my last video, I mentioned that I work at a life and retirement insurance company, but there's actually four main sectors in the business, which are individual retirement, group retirement, life insurance, and institutional markets, which takes care of services such as pensions and defined benefit plans for employees at client companies. There's also many different actuarial departments that you can work in as an actuary. In my current company, there are at least eight, including valuation, which is where you calculate the amount of reserves the company should hold to cover their expenses, pricing, which is where you help to set premium prices, experience studies, which is where you test assumptions against past experiences slash data to decide if your assumptions are reasonable, capital management, which is where you're working on calculations that affect the company's balance sheet and income statement, Cash flow testing, which is where you project future cash flows in and out and seeing if you have enough money in different scenarios, modeling, asset liability management, and even enterprise risk management. The biggest actuarial teams though exist in the pricing, valuation, and modeling departments. You probably notice that I am now working on a presentation. This is actually a group presentation that I'm working on with seven other interns. And we are making this presentation about the actuarial department's importance in the company. Funny thing though, is that we have to present in front of our audience, which will mostly consist of company leaders for 25 minutes straight, which is the longest presentation I've ever done. This is one of the slides that I'm currently working on. So I'm talking about some of the recent events and news that have taken place in the company. But overall, our presentation is about the actuarial department. We give an overview of it. We talk about some of the key leaders in the department. Also talk about some key knowledge and skills needed to succeed. 
And as you can see, these are some of the events that I've been talking about. But overall, this presentation isn't fully done yet. We're still working on it. But an interesting point is that we also talk about how an intern can contribute in the actual department during a short summer long internship. All right, I know that was a lot of talking for a few minutes and we're almost to lunch, but before I head out, I just have to make sure to send out a meeting invite to my group for the group project so that we can run through it next week before we present it to leadership. But then it's time to get ready for lunch. And excitingly enough, today was a company potluck. So I grabbed the homemade German chocolate cake that I made at home and I set it up on the table and just enjoyed all of the delicious food that my coworkers brought in. And this is my work friend, Jane. Hi, Jane. And then it's time to get back to work. I decided to spend some more time working on the group project before my next meeting. The next meeting was actually speed dating with senior leaders where we got to know them and they got to know us. I actually got to ask some pretty interesting questions about their career journeys. After the speed dating meeting, I caught up with my manager to talk about the progress of my Excel project and then I went ahead and made some more improvements. Now up next, I will show an up close view of my project and explain what each line of code in my project does. But for privacy reasons, I've taken out the actual names of the data I used, but everything else is the same. So this is the VBA code that I was mentioning before. This is also called a macro. So this macro is called mock macro because it's not using the actual data. In this first line here, I'm making a comment telling myself that in this paragraph, I am loading the output data. And right below that, I am naming the workbooks and worksheets that I will be pulling from. And then in the paragraph below that, where it says set, I am telling the macro where to pull the source files from. And so you can see that it is pulling from the input table ranges. Then I am copying the data from one of the files and then I'm pasting it into one of the other files. And then I'm taking that same data that I copied before and pasting it into the checks tab, which is where I make sure that the calculations have been done correctly. Then I'm basically doing the same process again, but with pivot table data, which is why it says load tables as in pivot tables. So you can see I'm telling the macro to pull from certain files in the input table. And you can see I have a line of code that says clear the previous data. And the reason that I clear the contents of the previous data is so that when I paste the new data in, we're not getting confused between what was already there and what has the macro just ran. At the end of the macro, I tell it to close all of the files that it has already opened. This application.displayalert equals true code makes it so the macro asks the user if they want to save or not save the files that are going to be closed. And as you can see, the very last line of code tells the macro to send a message box to the user telling the user that the macro has finished. And then the whole macro is done. Now, while this may or may not seem like a lot of code, I had to write five other versions of this. So by the end of the day, my brain is pretty fried and tired. Being an actuarial intern has definitely been a large learning curve. And I feel like no matter how far along in my career I am, I'm always going to be learning something new. I hope it was helpful for you all to see my work up close, but as you all probably know, actuarial work can vary a lot department to department. So if you have any questions or wanna share your experience as an actuarial intern, please comment down below. Well, it's time for me to clock out of work for the day. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's time for me to change into my comfy clothes and have a relaxing evening. I will see you in my next video. Bye.